Hey guys, Cronus Falls here, and today I'm going to be going over the speed clan boss strategy. So, as you all probably know, counterattack tends to be the stronger version for most people of clan boss teams, but not everyone can get one of the three counterattack champions in the game. So, you know, we've got a martyr here. In the barbarians, we have Valkyrie. And in the Ogren tribes, we have uh, Skull Crusher. So if you can't get one of those three, the best thing that uh, you're going to be able to do is you will be able to kind of bump speed as much as possible. So that's what I'm going to be going over in this video, and let's get into it. So I'll go ahead and go over the team I'm going to be running today. And uh, obviously, this team is going to be a little bit higher level, so uh, not something that early game players will really have access to. But the ideas are the same, so I hope that you take away uh, something from this, even if you don't have the same level of champs. So first of all, I've got Arbiter here. So she is one section of my speed team. And you will see I'm running her at 259 speed. Now, this is a speed that I'm looking for for... Well, actually, I would rather have it a little over 260. But a speed that I'm looking for for Ultra Nightmare Clan boss. So if you're fighting Nightmare or uh, Brutal especially, then you can get a lot lower speeds than this. You could be looking at like 230 and be fine. And, I mean, anything where you're lapping the clan boss is good, so as long as you're keeping it moving, keeping turn meter going, and you're at least like 20 speed over whatever clan boss you're fighting, you'll be looking pretty solid. So the gear I've got her in here, as you can see, I've got her rocking about 4k defense. So defense percent chest and a defense percent glove. And I've just got her in uh, five star speed boots because those gave me the best accuracy. So Arbiter's in here because she provides me with a weaken as well as two turn meter boosts, revive, and uh, increase attack for my Rotos. She does a whole lot plus some healing on that. So Arbiter's just a great champion. She comes in and does a lot of work on this team. But then the second champion that brings the speed is Apothecary. So I know a lot of lower level players have Apothecary. Uh, as far as rare champions go, he's probably the best. He's just amazing in every area of the game. And uh, he comes with me to my Nightmare and Ultra Nightmare comps. So let's go ahead and see what I got him in here. He's rocking about 3797 defense, so almost 3800. Uh, obviously not working on attack, but 41k HP, about 257 speed. Again, I would ideally get it above 260, but, you know, got to work with what I got. And then the crit damage and accuracy don't matter at all. He does do well with some higher crit rate, so down the line as I get better gear, I'll probably try and bump that up a little bit just to make his heals a little more impactful because uh, Apothecary, if you don't know, can crit on his uh, heal right here. So he brings a 30% increased speed buff for two turns, which is what makes him amazing, because the 15% turn meter gain is all right, you know, turn meter is always nice, but with the speed buff, you know, you're getting your whole team an extra, let's say most of my team is running around 200, so an extra 60 speed for two turns, that's, that's pretty solid. So those are kind of the two that make my team go fast, make it lap the boss, and that's what we want today. So now we'll go over the rest of the champs. Tayrell's coming in for a couple of reasons. First, let's go ahead and go over his gear. So he's got defense percent gloves, defense percent chest, and speed boots. So I've got him coming in at about 206 speed, it looks like. 4,058 defense. Uh, his HP is a little low. I'd like to get it over 30k, but that's not the most important thing. And then he's rocking 289 debuff accuracy. So potentially, actually, if I can bump his accuracy up a little bit, I could come down here uh, and switch him into a defense banner and get that even higher. 
because for Ultra Nightmare, you know, you want to get the accuracy around 230. So uh, I might be changing that up in the future. But as you can see, his gear is not crazy. He's got one six star piece, two four star pieces. And uh, they're not doing too much. Like this is giving me resistance. That's not helping. Um, some defense percent is nice though. So he could definitely use some improvement, but you'll see he does great in the gear I've got him in right now. Alrighty, and then after Tayrell, we've got Steel Skull here. So Steel Skull is going to be bringing me poisons as well as quite a bit of sustain. So I've got him in some defense percent gloves, and you'll see they've got a lot of accuracy on them. Defense percent chest, again a lot of accuracy and speed and then speed boots again with some accuracy on them. So the reason I'm pointing out that they have such high accuracy substats on all of my gear, like see 23 here, is because Steel Skull's got a really low base defense of 958. Now that makes it hard to get his defense to a level that I need for Ultra Nightmare Clan boss. So what I had to do when gearing him was find gear that had speed rolls as well as good accuracy rolls. That way I could come in and switch his banner out for a defense banner. So with that extra 338 defense, that helps a lot in getting him to this 3800 that I have him at. Ideally, I would get him over 4000, but for a Steel Skull, that's pretty tough. So I'm going to need some serious gear to do it. That being said, I've got him running at 27k HP. 3800 defense, 205 speed, and 205 debuff accuracy. Now that does need to come up a little bit, and uh, I will be going through my gear as time goes on and kind of bumping that, trying to get it to 230 for Ultra Nightmare. But 205 is great for Nightmare, he's not going to get resisted often. And then the final member of my team here is... Uh, where is... Rotos. There we go. I don't know how he was escaping my sight. He's right at the top. Anyways, uh, so this guy, I've got him in a Relentless set because he takes tons of extra turns. He does amazing damage. Uh, if his accuracy was higher, what I would do is uh, I would actually take Tayrell out because he could provide the defense down consistently. And then I would go ahead and switch from Tayrell over to Jareg because he could help me sustain. But that being said, let's go ahead and go over Rotos' build here. So as you can see, I've got him in crit damage gloves with uh, high speed and crit rate. Got him in an attack percent chest with again speed and crit rate. So the goal is to get the crit rate up to as close to 100% as possible. So as you can see, we've got 99% here while keeping him in relentless and speed because Rotos is a pretty slow champion. 90 base speed is one of the lowest in the game, as far as legendaries go at least. But uh, through gearing, you know, you can kind of get him where you need to. The reason I can't get his accuracy high enough, unfortunately, is only because I don't have an accuracy banner in Undead Hordes with a speed roll like this. So I need his speed to be over 191 for uh, Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss so that he's not getting uh, going after the Clan Boss. Like I said, I don't even think, yeah, see this is the only accuracy banner I have in Undead and it's only seven. So I'd be losing out on six accuracy, which, or not accuracy, sorry. I'd be losing out on, it looks like nine speed here, which uh, would take me right under the margin where I need to be, unfortunately. So, uh, in the future, I'll definitely be switching him out and changing this team up a little bit. But for now, he's doing pretty good. So, Rotos, his A1 has a 75% chance of placing a 60% decrease defense debuff for two turns, which is amazing. That's a very high chance for an A1. And a 30% chance of granting an extra turn. So, Rotos works really well in a speed comp. Not so well in counterattack because of these extra turns. So having him in Relentless Gear with his 30% chance, basically what you'll see I'll be doing with him is I'll be coming in and using his A2, which attacks one enemy 
decreases the target's max HP by 20% and then adds that HP to this champion's own max HP. But against bosses, what it does, it doesn't decrease max HP, but uh, it will heal or add to his max HP by 15,000. So uh, it is a pretty good ability. When you use it uh, four times, I'm going to be having his HP close to 90,000, which is insane. You'll see he'll probably be the last one alive, even though his defense isn't that great. So Rotos is just insane because on top of that, with the A1, which I will exclusively be using after I've maxed his HP with the A2, a 30% chance of granting an extra turn is very high on top of the 18% chance from the Relentless set. So with those two together, uh, he procs tons of extra turns. The most I've seen him take in a row is 17, which is just crazy. And he does huge damage. I've got him in War Master, so he procs that on top of it. He's a really crazy champion for clan boss, for arena, pretty much everywhere in the game. And uh, it's wild. So yeah, after you get his HP maxed, you use the A2 four times. You just spam the A1 and get as many turns as possible. So now that I've kind of gone over their skills, how they work in the team and their artifacts, I'm going to go over their masteries. So obviously they're all built for clan boss, which means that they're going to be coming mostly down to War Master. So you take the crit rate, crit damage, and then this path straight down to War Master. And then for Arbiter, like I said, I've got her in here for her weaken as well. So this is kind of a combination clan boss and arena build. So I'm coming down to Evil Eye here on the support tree, getting a little bit of uh, turn meter when the weaken runs off as well as some turn meter when a buff wears off. And then Lore of Steels, just bump it up my speed as much as possible. Uh, Sniper to give it a little bit extra chance of placing the weaken. And Spirit Haste, which increases speed by eight for each dead ally. So uh, that helps if your people are dying, it helps her just get in a little bit faster to revive them. So I don't think I really went over Arbiter skills too much. The A1 has a 50% chance when booked of placing a 25% weaken for two turns, which is nice. Now this one doesn't matter for clan boss, but this one fills turn meter of all allies by 30% on her A3 and places 50% increased attack buff on all allies for two turns and heals all allies by 25% of their max HP if they have less than 50% HP. So it's just a nutty ability. Uh, once we get later into the fight, the heal comes in a lot more often. And it's very nice. And then her AOE revive on her A4 revives all dead allies to 35% HP, then fills the turn meter of all allies by 20%, and grants an extra turn to this champion if an ally was successfully revived. So if you can go ahead and get in here with the A4, bring back at least one champion, then come in with the A3, They'll be at 35% health, so they get an extra 25. Now they're at 60%. They've gotten an extra 50% turn meter. Uh, again, just nutty champion. So that's it for Arbiter's build. Uh, Rotos, we've got him in very similar build on the offense side as far as coming down to War Master. But then we've got him in Life Drinker. That way, once he gets under 50% HP, he can start healing himself up. And then Cycle of Violence, uh, I have this for his arena build, and so uh, this helps him to get his cooldowns a lot faster in arena, it's very nice. And Blood Shield again for arena, it just gives him a little bit of shielding. Uh, if I did it again, I would probably switch from Blood Shield to Kill Streak just to let him do some extra damage, but that's neither here nor there. And then I've got him in Tough Skin on the defense side so the defense is mostly for arena again but this is just to increase his defense and it's a pretty standard arena build coming down to counter attack so the nice thing about rotos um if i had his accuracy higher i'd probably be building him support tree and coming down to master hexer and uh, probably sniper in order to make sure that defense was coming off as much as possible but he does plenty well on the defense side as well. All right, so that's Masteries on Rotos. Tayrell Masteries, again, straight line down to War Master. And then, as I said, uh, I would probably be doing for Rotos as we're coming in. We've got Evil Eye. 
uh, for other content in the game, Lore of Steel to kind of boost his accuracy. Is that what he's wearing? Yeah, boost his accuracy a little bit. And then we've got Master Hexer to extend the decreased attack and decreased defense, and Sniper to give an extra 5% chance of hitting that decreased attack, because if that falls off, we are dead. Alrighty, so that's Tyrell, Steel Skull, again, straight line down to War Master. We're coming over, we're getting an extra chance on poisons, and we're extending the buffs for our shields. So, as well as getting some extra turn meter on both the buffs and buffs. Finally, Apothecary. So, this one's a little different. We're still doing uh, crit rate to crit damage. Then, we're coming down through Life Drinker because I don't have him in Life Steel gear. Then, we're gonna grab Bring It Down which gives uh, extra damage against targets with higher max HP, which obviously Clan Boss has. Thoughtical, do extra damage on A1. And Killstreak, the only reason we have it is to come down to Giant Slayer here because he has a three hit A1. So that's very nice. And then Apothecary doesn't need accuracy, so we've got a little bit extra HP. Coming down to Lore of Steel to get some more speed and lasting gifts in order to uh, just potentially increase his speed buff He's also got some additional healing, and yada yada. So that's enough on the champion builds, let's go ahead and get into it, Oops. and uh, we will see how it does. So as you can see here, uh, I will be hitting both Nightmare and Ultra Nightmare for this video, but in Nightmare earlier today with this team, I did almost 39 million damage on a single key. Um, I don't typically do that much, I would say... My average is closer to 30 million, uh, but just keep that number in mind. Like if everything goes right, those are the kind of numbers I could be hitting. And if I increase my team a little bit, like I talked about before of getting uh, Rotos accuracy up and switching him out for Jareg, I think this team is fully capable of one king and nightmare consistent. Let's go ahead and get into nightmare and let's just see how it's done. So for this team, you're gonna wanna play on manual. So I start out with the A3 here just to boost their turn meter up and I'm going to wait on Apothecary speed up since their turn meters are already full. Wait till next turn. Go ahead and apply the decrease defense because he's not going to be hitting hard enough yet to warrant a decrease attack. We get some poisons going and we'll start on Rotos A2. So as I said, we're going to want to max his HP out as soon as possible. Alright, so we're not going to need the revive for quite a while, so we'll get the turn meter boost off of that. Turn meter boost off of Apothecary. So look, Clan Boss has taken one turn, now he's not even halfway to his next, and we're about to be going again with all of our champions. So that's the point of the speed build, is you want to be overlapping him as much as possible. So we're going to go ahead and keep doing poisons with Steel Skull, because the increased defense isn't going to be necessary again until later in the fight. We got the weaken up. We're going for an extra turn here, and we're going to get the A2 again. And so now we've got the decrease attack on, and we're just kind of going to repeat this. Um, as we get later into the fight, we will start mixing in uh, Steel Skulls A3, just in order to. Uh, you know, keep people alive a little bit longer, get that decrease or increased defense rather, and heal. And then we'll eventually start saving Arbiter's uh, revive as well in order to kind of keep ourselves ready. Because once someone goes down, you know, as we get later into the fight, uh, it's nice to be able to bring them back and keep boosting people up. So. I mean, that's the main strategy. Again, uh, both Arbiter, Rotos, and Apothecary, so all three of them are not in lifesteal gear. Rotos can take care of himself pretty well. He doesn't need a whole lot of healing. Um, Steel Skull does heal him up a little bit, but it's not really necessary. But uh, as you get later into the fight, Apothecary comes in really clutch with his A2, which is the heal because that helps to keep Arbiter alive. So as long as you're keeping Arbiter alive, you can revive your team, and that's kind of what helps push this team to the next level of damage. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and run this through, and then I will come back with the final results. 
Alrighty, so we're starting to get pretty late into the fight here. As you can see, we're about 10 minutes and 30 seconds in. And uh, it's a little slower because of uh, explaining everything at the start, but usually around 10 minutes is uh, when things start to get a little bit hairy, so you've got to play it carefully in order to make sure that you're not wiping. So as you can see, we're looking pretty good here, but the clan boss is hitting pretty hard at this point. So we got to make sure that that decrease attack isn't falling off and try and keep people topped up as much as possible. All right, so that was our first death there. Uh, Steel Skull goes down. Let's see if Arbiter's Revive is up. Uh, so, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and heal Arbiter. And that's the point of Apothecary is to keep Arbiter alive, as well as speed up, obviously. And that way we can uh, keep our team going as long as possible. So Apothecary is probably going to go down this turn, but then we will go ahead and revive and you will see, yeah, so see right here, here's a point where a lot of people would probably revive the Steel Skull and then uh, go for the A3 in order to heal, which uh, is okay. I mean, I might actually do it now looking at it because Apothecary is in good shape and no, you know, I'm not going to do it. And the reason is because if I do that, uh, Apothecary is going to come in, he's going to heal himself, and the clan boss is going to use his uh, slam to kill Steel Skull immediately, and I don't want that. So I'm going to come through, I'm going to hit normally, and let Apothecary die there, and that way we can get the team running properly again. So that's the kind of stuff in a speed team that you need to be looking out for to make sure that you're maximizing your damage. So we're gonna go ahead and do that and then come through. Steel Skull is going to probably just go A1, heal himself up. And hopefully Apothecary survives. Yeah, so he's okay. And so now we've got our whole team back up. We're running back how we need to be and we can continue going on. So we're reaching 13 minutes now, which is pretty high. Uh, we're definitely in danger zone. So at this point, just every turn that you can add is some extra damage, but be prepared to wipe at any time because he hits very hard. So now we've got this back up, but we're not going to have the uh, A3 around for another turn, so I'm gonna wait on that. See if I can get Apothecary in to heal Arbiter, hopefully. Perfect. So, uh, now after he does his next slam, I'm gonna come through and revive everyone again. There he goes. And now everyone is back up and we're running again. So this is why you have to play on manual with this kind of team, because if you don't, they're just not going to uh, rotate their skills properly, and uh, Arbiter is going to be using her revive just as a turn meter boost most of the time. And it just doesn't really work out that well, unfortunately. So if you're going to be running a speed team, especially like this one, I know there are some speed teams that can run perfectly fine on auto, but I would really suggest going manual. Alrighty. We'll keep Arbiter as healthy as possible. Alright, so now if someone goes down this turn, like Tayrell just did, we're going to have the revive. There we go. Now we bump them up, got some heals going. Rotos, like I said, pretty much takes care of himself. Even though it looks like he's getting low, he's got so much HP that it really isn't. He's pretty much always the last one alive whenever I do a run. Guys, taking a lot of turns, it's crazy. 
All right, so he's gonna come through and probably kill Apothecary now, so I'm not going to waste the uh, defense up until he's doing an AoE attack. Keep that decrease attack going. Get my Apoc. All right, so now I'm gonna come in and get the de or increase uh, defense going, keep ourselves alive a little longer. Alrighty, so let's see here. I could heal, and I think I will. Because I think uh, Arbiter is going to come around again to hit once more before the clan boss goes. So I'm good, yeah. So hopefully she survives here. She did not, so that's going to be the end of our run. as soon as Roto stops taking turns. <laughs> All right, there we go. So we went 1634. Normally it's about, uh, I'd say a 13 minute key for me when I'm not uh, slowing down to explain stuff. As you can see, 30 million damage here. Like I said, that's pretty much the average for this team. So in two keys, I've done almost 70 million damage to Nightmare. And there's definitely room for improvement. So I'm going to go ahead and go into Ultra Nightmare now, and uh, I'm not going to show all the setup or anything because it's exactly the same. I'll just kind of show you the end result, um, and we'll see how it goes. So as you can see, we're coming right up towards the end here on this Ultra Nightmare run. It lasted about eight minutes, and this is going to be the last go here for Rotos. See how much he can pull through. All right, and that's it. So 12.11 million on Ultra Nightmare. Now, typically I pull in about 15 million. Uh, this was a little bit of a low run for me. So as you can see, I'm not quite at a point yet where I can four key Ultra Nightmare. Uh, it still needs a lot of work on the team, but it is definitely a team that will be capable of it. As I go through, I start replacing their gear with more six star stuff. And, uh, you know, just overall boosting the team, I think it could easily get up to 20 million. But yeah, so... Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I've been appreciating everyone who's been engaging with me in the comments. It's been very nice to uh, talk with you guys. And if there's anything that you would like to see in a future video, please feel free to let me know. I want to create a community here with people who are engaged and interested in watching. So uh, thank you very much and please subscribe if you're interested in uh, seeing future content. Thanks.